Hey friends, welcome back to another Seed Talk with Lisa and Lane. Hey Lane. Hello. So friends, we are, um, I'm super excited to talk about this today. We have grown a lot of this through the years here and I can't wait to see what Lane is going to share with us today, which she's where she's going to lead this conversation. So <laughs> Lane, take it away. Well, today we're going to be talking about something that is not typically grown from seeds. It's grown from bulbs. And it's something that a lot of people force indoors this time of year going into the winter season. They have beautiful, fresh green foliage and nice, bright white flowers. And we are talking about paper whites. And they're so beautiful. They bring so much freshness into the house at this darker time of year. But there are a couple of issues people face when they're growing paper whites indoors. And one of them is the scent, which we'll touch on in just a moment. And then the other is an issue about flopping. A lot of people have issues with these growing and they grow so tall and then they flop over and it's a little bit disappointing. So we're just going to talk about some tips to help avoid that. Yeah, that'll be great because there is nothing better than in the dead of winter to actually have flowers blooming in your home. You know, my in-laws, um, who she's a big, always been a big gardener, um, every year I kept them supplied with paper whites and amaryllis throughout the season because, I mean, she said even daddy gets up in the morning and says, I can't wait to see the amaryllis because they grow oh. kind of fast yes. and they move along. So they're super exciting for kids old people and all people, you know, yes. I mean, I just really love them. So looking forward to our chat. So Lisa, before we start talking about flopping, can you just talk about the scent of paper whites, which is a really common complaint from people as why they can't grow them inside or don't want to grow them inside is that the smell tends to bother some people. Sure. So we really learned about this through the years when Suzanne and I were doing lots of shopping shows, you know, traveling and going to big bazaars and those kinds of things. And we sold gobs of paper whites and amaryllis during those. So we've heard from thousands of people, literally thousands. And the number one complaint when they see paper whites is, nope, can't have them. My family won't let me have them in the house because of the, the odor. They stink. They smell like you might have a cat. You know, that is the freight. That's exactly what we would hear from people. And that led us. I mean, that was a great conversation starter for us because we, in fact, seeked out those varieties. And there are a couple. I'm not going to say what their names are because they change from time to time. But you can look for those varieties that have a much lower fragrance. And I will tell you that they truly are significantly less fragrant than some of the most common one that has a fragrance is Ziva. Z-I-V-A, I believe is how you, um, I mean, that's the one you see available out everywhere. And she's a stinker. I mean, there's just no question about it. So typically, if you want to find the ones that don't have fragrance, you need to go to, you know, bulb um, catalogs or bulb suppliers and ask that question and they have them and they sell out first. Um, so that made a huge difference. And those people would be year after year customers buying them. So it really does make a really, really big difference. So there is a possibility you can have paper whites, even if somebody in your place does not like the fragrance. All right, so let's get into our discussion about preventing paper whites from flopping. And I want to say right away that all the beautiful images you're going to see if you're joining us over on YouTube were actually provided by Val Shermer, who's the instructor of an online on-demand workshop called Forcing Glorious Blooms for the Holidays and Beyond. And I will put the link to that in the show notes. All right, so Lisa, the first tip I wanted to talk about in terms of keeping paper whites from growing too tall and flopping is to grow in a cool room with adequate light. And this is a little difficult. Both of those points can be difficult in a winter indoor situation in a house. Can you talk about those? Yeah, and you know, a perfect spot sometimes is that spare bedroom that you keep the door shut and the vents closed on the heat because nobody's in there, you know, during the winter, right? That's yeah. like the perfect place. Um, if you either have grow a grow light that you use for seedlings, perhaps, or you have a, a bright window. And, you know, when you were just sitting there saying that lane, I thought to myself, so these bulbs want exactly what cool flowers want. They oh, want to get true. well rooted in, in cool conditions before they have to start growing up. 
But what we have to provide for these bulbs is the cooler air temperature like cool flowers are getting out in the garden, right? So in cool conditions like 55 to 65 degrees is what I'm, and I have not looked that information up in a long time. I'm guessing at that is like the optimal con temperature to get the bulbs to put down roots, but not to encourage top growth. Um, and that is step number one to having not such tall floppy bulbs is to get them to root in before you start encouraging top growth. Yeah. And cooler temperatures will actually make the flowers last longer as well. Yeah. Yep. And how about light, Lisa? Because a lot of people, maybe they have it in the middle of a room on a coffee table and it's pretty dim, you know, right over there. There's not any bright light directly on it. That also can cause the plants to really stretch and become lanky. So what our practice always was and the kind of the tips that we would share with people, it's like you're not going to put in those conditions, in dim conditions, particularly even at, like in a living room or somewhere where it's probably warmer than it should be, is yeah. that we actually grow them and get them up and budded perhaps somewhere else. You know what I mean? Yes. They don't start their life there. Um, you can even have two or three, you know, that's a great place to have orchids while you're waiting for your paper whites um, to get, you know, revved up, right? Um, so by the time we bring them out of that cooler growing condition, I, in my case, we always would support them and prepare them to be in low light situations, which we're, I think we're going to talk about in just a moment. Yes, we will. And that's a really good point, Lisa. You can definitely move these around yeah. as needed during different stages of their growth. And I just wanted to mention too, that once the plants are fully budded up and ready to bloom, keeping the flowers out of harsh sunlight and away from heat, again, ideally in a cool room, that's really going to help prolong the bloom time. Yes. And sometimes you're much better off to plant two or three containers to rotate them through that. You know what I mean? It's like yes. every I mean, I know people that every day moved their paper whites when they went to work, they either moved them into the cool, dry, bright room or, you know what I mean? So yes. it depends on how bad you want them, but it, it's possible. You just have to take some steps. Yeah. And if you don't have a cool room with adequate light, tip number two is going to be even more important for you. And that's going to be to provide some sort of support. So there are different ways you can do this. Maybe you're growing in pebbles in a really tall glass vase, you know, and the bulbs are toward the bottom and that provides some support. Or maybe you have stakes or maybe you use twine or another really beautiful natural looking option is to use some sort of twigs or branches. Yes. And, you know, the twigs that we used, I see in the image here that um, Val has demonstrated using some of those twigs. We found more, I mean, she's growing them in great conditions. Those are not tall and floppy that she's demonstrating here. We used fairly significant twigs to actually be able to give support when you're dealing with that really low light situation. Um, and I love using twigs. It just looks so yes. natural. And what we would do with paper whites um, is we installed the twigs right when we planted the bulbs. You know what I mean? So yeah. they're in there and actually the roots of the bulbs help shore up because I mean, the roots are very vigorous that they wrap around the bottom of the twig too and help shore it up. And then we would use um, natural colored raffia or you could use green raffia is just a natural type of string and even before we needed it just kind of put a a waist band around the, the foliage and tie a bow so that it kept it from falling over kept it from stretching and do i found that preventing that flopping um was better you had a better chance of how of having a beautiful container for a longer period of time than trying to stand foliage back up it will never go well when you do that it's kind of like flowers out in the garden lisa it's so much easier to have support in before exactly. you actually need it <laughs> exactly Okay, so that is a really great tip to provide support when you know you're not dealing with the greatest indoor conditions and they probably are going to get a bit tall and floppy. So just go ahead and provide some sort of support in advance. 
But there's also another trick, and this is going to be our third tip, and it is called the recipe, or at least that's what Lisa refers to it as. So there's a professor of horticulture at Cornell named William Miller, and he wrote an article called Pickling Your Paper Whites. And (laughs) this was a research study they did, and they actually found that when you water your paper whites with a 4 to 6% alcohol solution, the result is paper whites that are a third to one half shorter than their counterparts that were watered with just regular water, but their flowers are just as long lasting and large, the same size as usual. What do you have to say about the recipe, Lisa? So, yeah. So first off, age and myself, you know, we (laughs) always thought of the recipe from watching the Waltons when we were growing up because, you know, the two older Baldwin sisters were always, you know, they had a um, distillery in their basement (laughs) making the (laughs) recipe. But that's kind of why we named it the recipe. But this is basically a home recipe for a growth regulator is what it boils down to. And it works. We love Um, When we sold bulbs and beautiful little, um, you know, a great gift is little organza bags with, you know, one, two, three, four. We sold five bulbs and an organza bag with the paper instructions, which included the recipe. And um, and those were all low fragrance bulbs. And um, it just people we heard back. We did a big shopping show in Richmond, Virginia for many, many years. And every year we'd have the same customers coming back over and over again. And we would hear how that report actually went from their experience the year before. And it really, truly works. And I like the mystique that calling it the recipe kind of creates. Did you find that people were clamoring for the recipe when you would talk about it like that, Lisa? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, oh, we just heard so many funny stories. All right. I'm going to share my vodka with the paper white, you know, Um, but it was because that was always kind of a a friend show, you know, groups of people come together and it was really a lot of fun. And I will tell you that thousands of people started growing paper whites because of low fragrance and having the recipe. Those two things resolve two of the biggest pain points for paper whites. And I'm going to put a link to William Miller's article in the show notes if you want to read all about it yourself. But the recipe essentially is you have a couple of options. If you have 70% rubbing alcohol around in your house, you can do one part 70% rubbing alcohol to 10 or 11 parts water. Or if you have some hard alcohol around your house, you can put one part of a 40% alcohol distilled spirit to seven parts water. Right. And some of the examples of distilled spirits that list in the article are gin, vodka, whiskey, rum, and tequila. Right. So you just, they need to stick to the recipe and it'll work. And it's important to note Don't try to use wine or beer because those have sugars in them that can cause some issues for your paper whites. So only stick to the hard alcohol that is laid out in that study. So Lisa, what is your preferred method? Do you use the rubbing alcohol or do you bring out the... Nope, (laughs) we bought a bottle of vodka that we have actually (laughs) back here in the building underneath the sink that we use because this also works on amaryllis. And Lisa, when would you start watering with this? So we kind of, um, I mean, after they started elongating, you know, it's like once they have put down some roots and they've started to grow is when we start regulating them. So when they're still under six to 10 inches, for sure. Yeah. And in that actual article, Professor Miller laid out, add water as you normally would, like if you're growing in pebbles, for example, if you're growing in a water situation, it doesn't have a drainage hole. And then wait about one week until roots are growing and the shoot is green and growing about one to two inches above the top of the bulb. At that point, you can go ahead and pour the water off and replace it with this recipe, which is four to 6% alcohol solution. Yeah, that's really great. And I also want to piggyback on what you said earlier of growing paper whites and pebbles. A great way to do that is in those tall, slender cylinders, um, which are readily available Um, You know, at the cheesy stores, they'll sell them fairly inexpensively along with pebbles. Those were great teacher gifts that we used to give out. Um, But even at these big home discount stores, you know, where we buy all the home goods, those big, tall, gorgeous cylinders look pretty amazing with a bunch of paper whites growing in them. They do. They look beautiful. Yeah. And another thing to point out is to really try to stay in this range of a four to 6% alcohol solution. If you're using rubbing alcohol or hard alcohol that has a different 
alcohol concentration than what's laid out in the recipe, you can just calculate out how many parts of that you need relative to water to achieve that final concentration of four to 6%. But do take the time to calculate it out because too high of an alcohol concentration right. can cause issues with your bulbs or it can even be toxic. So just try to stay somewhere within that range. Yeah, stick to the recipe would be what I would think. <laughs> You Stick know? to the recipe. Yes. That's right. And just one other point is if you have some paper whites that are already growing and they're already flopping and frustrating you, don't forget that they make really excellent cut flowers. Yep, exactly. They last just as long in a vase cut as they did on the bulb. If not, because you can manipulate them even more, they might even last a little bit longer. Yeah. And you can succession start them too. Yes. Yep. You can start them throughout the winter, not just for Christmas. Yes. And if anybody's wondering, if you're looking at these beautiful images that um, Val um, from Val's Paper Whites, that is reindeer moss that she uses. And that is just one of many of the amazing tips. Um, she makes over the top beautiful bulb containers and teaches you yes. how to do that in her course. And I learned we had been growing and selling amaryllis for 10 years when I watched her course and I learned so much. It's like, we just never stop learning y'all. I just keep learning that over and over again. You know, it'll save you so much grief by learning from her. She's amazing. Okay, well, that was it for our episode on helping to prevent your paper whites from flopping. Hopefully those tips can help you so that you have a little bit shorter, stockier paper whites that are not flopping all over the place. But thank you so much for joining us again. We love when you leave likes and comments over on YouTube or ratings and reviews in a podcast app. And we appreciate everyone who has subscribed and followed. So thanks so much for joining us again. And so thank you so much, Lane, for finding Professor Miller's article too. That would be really a great source for people. Yeah. Um, and friends, remember, this is what can keep you going while you're starting seeds. You can have your indoor bulbs blooming. And, um, and don't forget about old people and kids love. This is a great way to introduce them into gardening or for those that can't get out in the garden anymore. So yeah. I love that thought. I haven't thought about that in a long time since we um, don't offer the bulbs anymore. And um, that was really a big part of that. So, all right, friends, until we meet again, let's meet over at thegardenersworkshop.com where you'll find Lane and I hanging out most of the time. Ciao. Yeah. Bye. Bye.